Okay, welcome to lecture 11.1. We're gonna finally put together everything that we've learned so far and write the equations of motion of a multi-body dynamic system. Um, so uh, I'll primarily uh, do a little bit of stuff on the notes, but then we'll move quickly into a Jupyter notebook and just show how these things are done uh, in practicality. So we're going to talk about equations of motion. If I can spell it. We have written um, two pieces. One is uh, the generalized active forces. And the other, FR star, are the generalized inertia forces. Okay, these are uh, vector equations as I've, I've written them with the bar there. Um, and uh, we would have uh, the rth um, of n degrees of freedom if we have a holonomic system with no extra constraints. All right, so we're gonna work with uh, degrees of freedom of p equals to n here, uh, no extra holonomic constraints and also no non-holonomic constraints. And I'll just add non. So non and holonomic constraints. All right, so sort of the simplest system we're gonna talk about today, and we're gonna work with these two. The generalized active forces and the generalized inertia forces, hopefully you've uh, maybe realized that um, if we think of Newton, uh, Newton's equations, Right, these represent the sum of all the forces, okay, in F equals MA. Right, so this is, is essentially that part. And the generalized inertia forces are the right-hand side of this equation. They represent all of the um, forces due to uh, the accelerations, but also for multi-body systems and, and for rigid bodies, uh, due to different uh, velocity effects that are, uh, this right hand side is often called um, uh, the fictitious forces, right? And then the left hand side are the actual forces that we apply to the system. So the generalized active forces are any um, uh, external forces that do work on the system. We're able to formulate uh, those from them. And then all the generalized inertia forces come from the uh, m times uh, uh, mass times acceleration, and then the time derivative of the angular momentum terms in the rotational term things. Okay, so that's what we have here. Uh, uh, Keane uh, and Levinson, uh, the book we've been following, uh, present these equations, um, the, effectively the Newton-Euler equations. Uh, if you put them together, we have fr plus fr star must equal to zero. And that's similar to writing f minus ma must equal to zero for uh, a simple particle equation in 3D. So these equations here are the dynamical um, differential equations. Right. And we've already also written the kinematic differential equations. And if we put them both together, we get the equations of motion of the system. So this fr plus fr star equals zero um, are also called, because they're written in this form, uh, Keynes equations. So I'll use that term often. And he's not the only one that sort of figured this out. Um, if you look in the literature, you'll see that there are a number of approaches to arrive at the equations of motion, uh, and Keynes uh, is one take on that. 
and it has similarities to other ones in, in very specific ways and then uh, not, uh, uh, some non-similarities in, in other ways. All right, so fr plus fr star are the dynamical differential equations and we call them Keynes equations. So these equations, um, fr plus fr star, um, they are some function and I forget that I use uh, fd so if I have a some vector function I'll call it fd it's going to be a function of the time derivatives of the generalized speeds the generalized speeds the generalized coordinates and uh, potentially time okay and then all that has to be equal to zero this um, uh, is similar like when we we can also write the kinematic differential equations in that form the kinematic differential equations are functions of uh, the u's the q's and t all right so dynamical kinematical and we know uh, something about both of these equations um, the kinematical differential equations are linear in both the u's and the q's, okay? And, um, oh, sorry, I didn't quite have this uh, right here. I also need a q dot. There we go. So this is a function of the q's, q dots, the u's, the q's, and t. All right, so we know that the um, kinematical differential equations are linear in the q dots and the u's, right? Not the q's, as I mistakenly was about to say. And um, that means that um, f of k can also be written as um, some matrix, uh, I'll call it mk times the q dots and then I'm just going to put everything else in a vector function which I'll call gk uh, so that'll be u's the q's t equal to zero this is uh, an uh, implicit form of the differential equations and you can make it explicit by solving for the q dots so Q dot equals the inverse of M K um, times a minus G K. All right, so we could solve that linear system and we would have some equations uh, for the Q dots and make them explicit. Well, this also happens to be true for the dynamical differential equations. They are always linear in the u dots because we arrived at the u dots when we calculated the fr star. And the fr star, it comes from uh, finding the time derivative of uh, the linear and angular momentum. And that will guarantee that we get terms that are linear in the u dots. So f of d can be written like so. And similarly, we can solve for the u dots, which are the acceleration like terms, right? And that would look like this. All right, and so now these are explicit in the u dots. So, why do we want that? Well, uh, making these explicit is how we will ultimately solve um, this set of differential equations. Uh, we are interested in the trajectories of the Q's and the U's as a function of time. 
But we only have equations that are um, representing the time derivatives of both of these terms. So if we want to uh, get all of those, we have to integrate these equations. And we typically solve the initial, solve the initial value problem. Um, we want to integrate these equations as over time. And then we can arrive at um, results for, for example, the Q's as a function of time. If we integrate this equation uh, uh, minus mk minus 1 g, right? But these are coupled, right? We have the q's and the u's in both equations. So if I introduce a state vector x that are the q's stacked over the u's, then um, we can write, oops, we can write um, these equations like so. We can say that the uh, Q dots and the U dots, which is our X dot, right, equals something times our state vector Q U. plus some remainder term here. And I can uh, take uh, the equations that I already had, the um, coefficients um, of the u's in, the, in this equation are mb, and then uh, mk goes here. All right, so these are submatrices in this larger matrices. This larger matrices is gonna be 2n by 2n, right? And then this is 2n by 1, also 2n by 1. This last bit, too, will also be 2n by 1, and that's where the g, keep writing that as q, but g, k, and g, d go. And all that has to be equal to 0, right? And this is also 2n by 1. We can just call uh, this, I believe I called it in the notes, um, mm, right? Yep. So mm times x plus um, gm equals to 0. And then... Uh, that is also equal x dot equals this. Right? So if we want to integrate x dot with respect to time from t0 to tf, we can then find the trajectories x versus time when we do that integration. And then we'll need to put this expression that we form here in, oh, uh, I'm being a little premature here. We can solve that. Uh, this is, uh, oh shoot, I think I screwed up uh, a bit. Yep, thinking faster. So let's erase that, right? That is not x dot, but this is x dot. There we go. All right, that equation is correct. And there we go, x dot m, x dot plus g equals zero. And then we could solve that x dot equals m m inverse one minus g m. All right, sorry for that. And we have our equations correct. And then I can replace this here, so I'd get uh, from some initial time to a final time. There we go. So our goal is going to be to form this expression which is only a function of the q's and the u's in time, and integrate that so that we can find out um, what those uh, trajectories are. And I'll use that term often, over time. All right, so that's our basic goal. We need to form these matrices, though, um, to help us do that.
So that'll be the first step here. And we're going to use this problem. Okay. So this is the same problem that I've introduced in the book. Um, if we're looking on um, this rod here, which has some inertia and mass, it uh, rotates about the NZ, which is pointing directly out of the board. And then the A axis, AX axis goes along that rod. And the second rod is pinned in a way that it rotates about the AX equals BX axis. Okay, so we get um, a rotation about an axis um, that is uh, 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 lying in the plane of the board. Right, and Q1 and Q2 describe that. All right. A0 is the mass center of the first rod. It's in the uh, halfway between the ends. And B0, halfway between the ends. These are uniformly dense rods. They also have these uh, springs, little linear torsional springs, that are restricting the motion um, at Q1 and Q2. We have gravity at play. And the other thing I've added here is a mass at point Q, particle Q, that can slide along the BY direction of the bottom rod. And this is a bit different than uh, the uh, notes in the book, but I'm going to say that I can put an arbitrary specified force here. Right? So maybe I can have a little motor that applies some force to this uh, Q to uh, try to, I don't know, do something. We could maybe control the motion by moving Q into certain spots, but I'm going to make this an arbitrary uh, function uh, f that we can set it to anything we want. We can set it to zero. We can set it to behave like a spring. We can uh, set it um, as a PID controller that tries to do some controlling, anything we want. Uh, but we're just going to leave that as a specified force there. All right. So that's the problem we're going to work with. Let's jump over to the Jupyter Notebook. And... I'll start a new notebook. I'll name this equations of motion. Okay, make our standard imports. Move this a little. And I guess I lost my. You don't see my face when I'm on this screen. I don't know why that. Maybe I can add it real quick. Oh, yeah. Maybe I never added that. I'll fit right there. Okay, let's move on. Import Simpy. Uh, Okay, that should get us started here. Um, I am going to take some of the code from this problem to give us our setup. Let's take all the way down to the velocities here so that we don't have to retype things. All right, so this, we've already been over in the notes. I've got the reference frames. I set up my orientations. I've introduced some generalized speeds. Um, and I've done everything here except for the velocity of the new um, point Q, right? So I do want to add that velocity, and um, and then we'll grab some more things to get the inertia properties and stuff. So let's introduce point Q. And I will uh, set its position. So Q uh, set position relative to um, BO, right? And it's going to be Q3 times B dot Y. And, and then we'll also um, set its velocity. Um, and then velocity, we're going to use simple definitions of the generalized speed. So Q dot equals U. So I'll go ahead and set that, set velocity, 
and then here it's going to be in B, right? Will be U3 times B dot Y. Alright. And then I should be able to get Q dot velocity in N now as a reasonable result, which that looks correct. So then we have the velocity of Q. Um, we're also going to need the velocities of uh, or the uh, accelerations of important points, right? A0, B0 are the mass centers of the rigid bodies, and Q is a particle. So we're to calculate the partial velocities of those, we're going to need the accelerations. So let's have a look at those. If I ask for the acceleration of AO and N, um, I have my U1 dot present here, and then I have a um, this uh, centripetal acceleration term, u2 squared, right? That points in the negative a direction. If I look at b0 dot acc in n. Uh, also, uh, nicely here, um, it's similar except we have l, it's l over 2. And um, notice that these are all in terms of the u's and the q dots, right? I don't see any. Uh, sorry, the U's and the U dots. I don't see any Q dots there. Now if I do Q, A, C, C, and N, um, this is looking pretty good too. So I have a more complicated acceleration. There's a U1 dot, U1 uh, squared there. I've got these U2 times U3, U3 dot, etc. I also do not see any um, Q dots. Okay, so if I had Q dots here, I'd like to eliminate them and make sure that these are in terms of only the U dots, the U's, and the Q's. So my accelerations are looking good. Let's look at, check the angular accelerations of the two frames. We'll also need that. Looks good. And then B, ang acceleration, and then also looks good. So because I set my velocity here as U3 and the velocity calculations weren't too complex, I don't end up with any uh, Q dots present in any of these terms. So I think I'm ready to go for calculating uh, partial velocities for sure. So we've got uh, the different points and we'll start with those and I'll use, um, uh, we have the velocity of AO, so the velocity of AO in N, and that's just assumed uh, one is going to be um, AO dot velocity in N a diff with respect to U1 in N. Let's just check to make sure that's doing what we expect, and I get a partial velocity. All right, so this is repetitive. Um, we've got three generalized speeds, so I always have to do three partial velocities. And I should get some nice results then. All right, those are my, our first partial velocities and then We've got to do this, do a repeat for each point. So I'll just copy this, change this to B, 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 and B, B, B. And then we will do the same for Q. And in the um, lecture notes, I actually try to, these are pretty repetitive, right? If you have a lots of generalized speeds, you basically, they only have to change one thing. So this makes for a nice uh, use of, of loops. And I show you how to do that in the, in the lecture notes um, right here, right? And I try to explain it. So you'll have to take a look at that, but you can build up 
uh, everything you need um, in this nice loop that will basically apply to any system that you ever uh, work with. But we'll just do them manually here so you can see. And then I need the angular acceleration, um, I'm sorry, the angular partial velocities of A and B. So I'm going to also just copy this and we'll call this omega A. One, two, three, and then this is going to be a, 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 and this is ang velocity in. Right, so ang velocity in and ang velocity in. A, 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 w, w, w. All right, I think that gives us the first angular velocity partial, and then we do it for B. There we go. So we've got the partial velocities of all of our velocity terms, and note that you know all of the velocities are only expressed in terms of U's and possibly Q's, and with that we can always uh, guarantee to get the right partial velocity there if we're taking diff, diff, uh, partial derivatives with respect to the use. All right, I think I've got all the partial velocities set. And um, we need to think about the inertias and the forces, etc. So I'm going to copy a little bit of code here on the inertia stuff. Let's grab this. Um, the rods, you can look up uh, for a thin rod what the equations are, so the, um, uh, they do not have any inertia about the primary, the long axis, right, because it's uh, considered a very thin rod compared to its length, but the length and the, um, uh, along the other two axes, we have ml squared over 12, and I can set up two inertia dyadics that capture the central um, inertia vectors. I'm oh, sorry, inertia dyadics of each of those rods. And they're not too complicated, but we've got those present. And um, that gives us that. And now we also need to set up the forces that are applied to um, each of these points, right? So we're going to do the resultant on AO. We'll start with that. Uh, there is a gravitational force that acts at the mass center of each rigid body and one on the point Q. They're in the positive in x direction. So I think I made the masses all the same here, right? So we can do m times g times in x. Um, R leo equals m times g times in x. And then qo. Not QO, but Q has an M times G times NX also. But we've got this force F that comes into play. And let's create a variable with a dynamic symbol, a time varying force F uh, magnitude uh, here that we can use as a variable. And I don't think I used F anywhere else, so it should be safe. Um, Q, we're going to have a positive force in the BX acting on it, so plus F times B dot, sorry, Y. But there will be equal and, actual, and, opposite, equal and opposite force back on the BO, so we need a minus F times BY there. All right. So that should give us our resultants on each of the relevant particles or mass centers and we get those force vectors. Now we need to think about the torques acting on the two rigid bodies. So the torque on A is if I increase Q1 we're going to get a negative kT times Q1 in the n dot c direction. Right? So it's going to try the spring, we'll try to pull it backwards uh, if you open up Q1 larger and that's all that's acting on it and then on B um, 
we will have a um, also a negative kt times in this case q2 times b dot x right so it'll resist rotation about b dot x but this does apply something back onto ta technically so we would want a positive kt times q2 times b dot x there to give the equal and uh, opposite torque and I think that's what we need. Yep, T V. All right, so we've formulated the uh, resultant um, here and uh, forces and torques so that we can formulate the generalized active forces. And let's go ahead and make the uh, R star AO on each one, right? I have a minus M times AO dot ACC and N. R star VO. And R star Q. Right. And then our T star, the inertia torques on the A. Right. Remember we get it minus and just so I can I don't always remember this off the top of my head, the exact order of things, but we have alpha um uh dotted with I and then cross Da, 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 da. All right. I think I can get it. So we're going to have um, our angular acceleration. So A dot ang acceleration in dotted with, and I'll use ME dot our I A O, right? And plus. Let me go to a new line, me dot cross um, a dot ang velocity in with i ao, and then you dot all of that with the angular velocity. I think that's it. Here we go. So pretty simple. There's actually no cross term uh, in this simple rotation. Uh, but if we do this for B, we should get a little more interesting result. That's it. And there we go. So the um, inertia torque on B has a little more to it. Okay. You notice too, you want to check at this point to make sure there's no Q dots present. And uh, if there are, you want to make sure that you have eliminated them with your kinematical differential equation definitions. So if I look at uh, I think I have to give this a, I don't know, using the wrong function. Find dynamic simples of T, S, A, and then I have to give it a frame. I think I got to tell it that it's in reference frame A. Find dynamic symbols, oh yeah, reference frame. So find dynamic symbols of that vector T, S A and then reference frame in. So I don't have any Q dots that pop up there, and I can also check B. No Q dots there. Right? And you can check also the R 
uh, stars. All right, so I think we have all the pieces we need to now formulate FR and FR star. So um, we can do so. I'll do um, FR, and I'm going to go ahead and put it in a matrix here, single column matrix. And um, for the generalized active forces, recall that we need to do for each of the generalized active speeds, um, we'll have uh, contributions from each particle. Right? So I will do a V AO1 dotted with the result and on A O to get that particle's contribution plus V AO sorry V B O one dotted with R B O plus V Q one dotted with R So that would be our first row. And we also need the torque contributions. So let me hop down here. Plus omega A1 dotted with T A. Plus omega b one dotted with t b. All right, so that should give our first row there. Let's just see what that looks like. And then if I copy this three times, and all we do is change the ones to twos and threes, we can get the other rows. So the next one is two, 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 and then three, 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 three. All right, that's our FR there. So that looks good. And we basically can copy this. I make an FR star and change all of these to the R star and the T star terms. And I think that might be right. FR star. Okay, so let me just have a look at my results, see if we got something similar. Oh yeah, I don't have the K, the second spring in there, the linear spring. So there will be some differences. On the FR, but the FR star shouldn't. Got a more complicated result in the in my solution. Let's, let me just read through to make sure I haven't screwed up anything here, which is always possible. Forces. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, was it a mass? Oh yeah, I forgot that I made the mass of Q to be m over four. All right, so that would uh, be present there, and then we would also have an m over four here. So that will make a, a difference. 
And then we get those over those terms over four. Okay, that I think is looking closer to the result. Forgot the m over four and all right, we have fr and we have fr star, I believe. And if I have a mistake, you guys can point it out to me. And if I want to form Keynes equations, um, I can just call it Keynes equations equals fr plus fr star. And these are the dynamical differential equations here. We get the whole thing. All right, so now let's extract some of these matrices of interest. Um, we know that uh, M D, right, are the linear are the linear coefficients of the U dots. Okay, the U dots only show up in the F R S term, the uh, F R star. So to extract that, it's very simple. We can just use the Jacobian to take the partials with respect to the U dots. Okay. So first, let's create a u vector that contains u1, u2, u3, and then a u dot vector, which equals u dot diff. And then, just to be explicit, let's make sure we have our t. And that'll give us u dot. And I can split the cell. We now have a vector u dot, and if I take the partial of fr star with respect to u dot, I should get this coefficient matrix. All right, and we do. Let me just double check that I get a similar result. It's actually simpler than that q3. q3 term is not present. What have I missed? I'm going to pause the video for a moment and just double check my work and then I'll come back and take the answer. Okay, I think I did find the error. And if we come back up here and look at the velocity of, of Q and N and then the resulting acceleration, I don't think that's quite capturing everything. And this, unfortunately, is a bug, I believe, that was introduced in the latest SymPy um, edition when it tries to do automatic velocity calculations. So to make sure that we get the right result here, it's going to be better to use the two-point theory explicitly. So we can say that, um, sorry, the one-point theory. So we know that Q is moving in B, right? So I can say one-point theory Q relative to BO. And then I can say um, that uh, we're looking for the velocity in the in frame uh, ultimately, and that both of these, the Q is moving in the B frame and BO is fixed in the B frame. So this actually should give us the correct velocity. And notice now we have a Q3 term here. Um, that is in fact the correct velocity. So watch out, that is a bug in SymPy. If you just try to let the velocities to automatically calculate, um, it may get uh, incorrect answer. So make sure to use your V1 point and 2 point theories to get the entire velocity term there. Okay, so now I'm going to move through. Um, our acceleration is now more complex. And notice we have Q dots in there. Okay, so we're going to want to eliminate those Q dots. So I'm going to introduce a new cell right here. And um, I'm going to make a little uh, Q dot replacement dictionary. And it's uh, fairly simple. Q1 diff is going to be U1. Q2 diff is going to be U2. And Q3 diff is going to be replaced with U3. And that's supposed to be a Q. Q1 
issue two. And that's going to be a set equal to a dictionary. So we're going to substitute these in QD REPL replacement. Looks good. And then if I do Q.ACCN dot X place QD REPL, now I eliminate all the Q dots from my equation. And then we want to set that Q dot set ACC and in to this value. And then our Q dot ACC in should return what we expect. All right, so this is the proper velocity, I mean, sorry, acceleration. It's a bit nastier uh, because that point is moving. We need to make sure that we put one point theory is applied. So that bug will be fixed in the next release, but it's in like Simpy 10, I think. So uh, watch out for that and, and just use your two point and one point theories to make sure things work. So let's execute the code. Um, everything's the same that we did. We see we get a little bit more complicated partial velocities. And once we formulate the equations, the dynamical equations, they get a little longer. And then finally, I get a mass matrix that I think is going to look like what I want. Yep. So this is going to be the correct um, coefficient matrix for the U dots. All right. And then we can also get a GD. Okay. And how do we do that? Well, in the equations that we have, we can just substitute all the U dots as zero. And the remaining, everything that's left should be GD. So let's make a uh, U dot zero replacement and um, that's going to be uh, uh, u1 diff zero u2 diff zero and u3 diff equal to zero all right u d zero ripple and then um, if I take uh, FRS and X replace all the U dot terms on zeros, I'm going to get a, a remainder here that is not all of G, D, but if I add FR, then this is going to be that G, D term. D. There we go. So we now have um, this coefficient matrix to the UDs and the um, remaining GD term. Okay. And recall that uh, um, FR, so let me just scroll down. We just found the MD and the GD term. Where did I write that? I guess on the above side. Oh yeah, here. So that we could potentially solve for the U dots. All right. And in fact, um, you know, you can do this symbolically, and I didn't do this in the online notes, but let's just have a look at that. If I do MD dot LU solve which will do Gaussian elimination to solve that linear system. Uh, G, D, and it's going to be have a negative sign there. We can do that. It's going to take a minute to print this. Processing the math. For some reason, it's giant. I think it's still trying to render. <laughs> Maybe I put it on normal size. This page is slowing down Firefox. 
<laughs> so um, right now it's basically just trying to print the solve doesn't take very long actually symbolic but it's trying to print the result and the result even for these two small relatively small matrices is a bit nasty and should print by now I'm not sure why it's taking so, quite so long um, I think I've sort of locked things up. I'm going to stop that. And I'm going to refresh the browser, hopefully. Gosh, it doesn't. Oh, there we go. Is it uh, finally doing something? All right, there. Uh, I guess I did, didn't save. Let's. I'm gonna try it one more time. We're gonna do md dot lu solve of negative gd. I'm gonna restart and run all. Hopefully, everything is in place here. Let's see if it'll actually print this to the screen in, a, in some way we can actually view it. It really doesn't like that. Oh, no. Loading web font, something, something. Oddly, this doesn't usually take so long, even for a big expression but I mean the point is uh, solving this symbolically is a bit of a nasty mess and um, you don't really want to do that in general okay so these Gaussian elimination to solve and find the solution to some linear system if you've got big symbolic terms and these aren't even that big of matrices you can still get a quite a messy result and and this seems like math jacks or something is having a hard time rendering it even um, but the we're really going to stop at just getting these matrices and then in the next lesson I'm going to show you how to move on in all numerics so that we can um, start to look at the numerical values of these matrices and then simulate the systems and such but We've got the equations of motion, and we extracted the linear coefficients of the U dots and this uh, GD, the remaining uh, term here. Okay. Oh, and I think it might have. There it goes. It prints. All right. So it took a little while, and we can see that it's a bit of a nasty, hard to print even um, system there. Wow. So it's a pretty, pretty crazy symbolic result. All right, so it's not that useful to look at, and we don't need to. I could even, this will probably take forever, but I could try a trig simp of that. And trying to simplify that too is basically simplification of symbolic results is not an easy task for computers, even to this, in this day and age. Uh, it might be able to do something with it. But I'm not sure. I'm just going to pause the video and let it run. Um, and then I'll come back if I can get a result. Okay, I've waited like eight minutes and it's still not done. So you didn't get to suffer through that with me, but don't do this. You don't need to solve these uh, systems and definitely don't try to, to simplify them. So I'm going to kill the kernel and we're going to get rid of that. Um, to be honest, the only thing that's any useful at all is going to be like if you CSE that, and uh, I could do that. So let me just restart, run whole, the whole notebook, and this should compute fast and give us some idea of the complexity, something that we can read. So if I 
look at the res the first results I get all the these substitutions which are those and then result uh, one should give me the matrix so it's not too bad that uh, solution if you use common common sub expression elimination which I taught in the first very first lesson in Senpai give you some idea of what that does um, so the solution isn't too insane but it's basically a lot of repeats of all these expressions and and if you try to print them all in their big fo uh, form, then it's no, no use. Okay. But anyways, we're not really. You're not going to do this step. All we're going to need to do is get this coefficient matrix and the remaining term GD, and then we'll be able to simulate the systems. All right. So that's uh, lesson eleven point one.